Hello. The topic of my case study is spina bifida cystica, specifically myelomeningocele. It is a visible defect with an external sac-like protrusion which contains the spinal cord, the meninges, and the nerves. This abnormality can be discovered early in a child's life by a alpha fetoprotein, which can be measured at 16 to 18 weeks of gestation. Um, it may be used to assess for neural tube defects in the fetus or chromosomal disorders. It may be evaluated to follow up a high level of AFP in the maternal serum. Spina bifida is caused by a uh, combination of genetic factors and environmental influences um, that bring malformation of the spine. Neural tube defects are caused by the failure of the neural tube to close in the first three to five weeks of gestation and are linked to insufficient folic acid in the um, mother in the maternal diet. Many researchers suggest that an increased intake of prenatal folic acid um, greatly decreases the risk of bearing a child with these neural tube defect abnormalities. In most cases, spina bifida is obvious at birth because of the sac-like protrusion um, in the lumbosacral area or the spine may be open, exposing the spinal cord and nerves, which is the most serious because of infection that can cause meningitis. Impairments uh, will present depending on the level of the spinal cord, of the spinal injury. You may find complete paralysis or even a slightly decreased sensation um, in their lower extremities. Other findings may include joint deformities, uh, bowel and bladder incontinence, um, developmental delays, and a high risk for latex allergy. Most infants also develop hydrocephaly, which is an accumulation of fluid on the brain, according to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Upon assessment, you may find vertebral anomalies, skin dimples, tufts of hair, and localized areas of skin deficiencies over the spine. According to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, one in 500 pregnancies in the southeastern United States presented with a varying degree of spina bifida. My case study is as follows. Physical assessment findings are extensive at birth. Upon inspection of the sac, determine that it is intact. Um, inspect the lumbo lumbosacral area for dimpling. Assess for an increase in head circumference, um, which may occur with hydrocephaly um, until the normal cranial growth is reached. My patient presents with a protruding sac in the lumbosacral area. Um, I will assess the skin integrity for pressure sores caused by decreased sensation in the affected trunk and extremities because the patient must remain prone at all times in order to prevent opening the sac. Um, Patient does not respond to painful stimuli on lower extremities. Um, I have identified the latex allergy um, by using the radio allergosorbent test or the RAST, R-A-S-T test, RAST. Um, the APGAR is 5 out of 10. Um, assess, assessing the developmental, um, the cognitive development which is delayed, assess the bowel and bladder functioning because it will be permanently damaged. He has not had meconium or void at this time. Work with the family on strategies for bowel and bladder control. You can educate them to use condom catheters, briefs, 
um, and teach them how to assess the color, the clarity, and the amount that their child voids. Um, monitor for signs of infection, but make sure that you don't take a rectal temperature. Uh, his axillary temp was 99.6. Um, he did vomit times one. Uh, it was it was green, um, a scant amount. Um, he was the child was lethargic, uh, which may indicate increased intracranial pressure. Um, educate the parents that the child will receive a shunt during his sac removal operation. Um, the the shunt will drain the fluid from the four quadrants of the blank, of the brain as he has developed the ICP, the intracranial pressure. Assess for the um, infant parent attachment. Um, mom is excited to start breast pumping. Um, make sure that you assess the integrity of, excuse me, of the sac at least every two hours um, prior to the surgery. The sac is intact. Teach the parents not to touch the sac um, because it could easily break, leading to that severe infection. Um, if, it, if it does get infected, it travels up the spine and inflames the meninges, causing meningitis, which is deadly to the child. Um, make sure that you assess the skin under the bony prominences. Since they are always laying prone, um, there are exercises that you can move their legs in a sort of bicycle-like maneuver um, just to get the pressure off their knees and their ankles and the tops of their feet. Uh, make sure that you do reposition them as best as you can every hour. Um, some tests that are done uh, would be an MRI, an ultrasound, a CAT scan, uh, and a myelography. Um, they may determine the uh, brain and spinal cord involvement. Um, closure of the myelomeningocele sac is done as soon as possible to prevent complications of injury and infection. Assess the family coping and support. Um, parents are ready to be involved and they have been preparing since they were aware of the high alpha feta protein. Um, testing that was done at 16 to 18 weeks of gestation. Um, Preoperatively, cover the exposed sac with a um, sterile saline gauze. Um, make sure it's a non-adhering dressing. Uh, place the newborn in the pone position um, and postoperatively measure the head circumference um, and abdominal girth on infants and observe for signs of increased intracranial pressure. Um, they may present with a high-pitched cry, um, the bulging fontanelles, vomiting and irritability. Um, bladder surgery may also be performed while the sac is being removed. Um, monitor for signs of bladder dysfunction, infection, bleeding, and pain. Um, assess and perform range of motion exercises. Um, keep the skin uh, clean and dried um, to prevent infection again around that sac. You, you really want to make sure since they're incontinent that none of the stool is entering the opening where that sac like protrusion it was after removal. Um, always involve the parents and educate because this is a lifelong process of hospitalizations and follow-ups. Thank you.